Hi there, welcome to Long Distance Review, and welcome to part three of my Download Festival 2019 review. Uh, part one and part two are up on YouTube, and that's uh, part one's on the Friday, part two's on the Saturday, and part three, obviously, is on the Sunday. So these are the bands I saw on the Sunday uh, Download Festival 2019. Um, I'll rattle on because I've got quite a lot to get through, and I don't want to drag it on for too long. So the first band I went to see is Kane Hill, who opened up the main stage. Now, Kane Hill were quite a sort of buzz band quite a few years ago when they came out with their sort of new metal sounding uh, uh, songs like Time Bomb and New Jesus. And I think they lost a lot of people on their second album. Well, I think their second album was really good. They had a bit more of a sort of Alice in Chains leaning to some of their songs. Um, so I think the buzz behind them has gone a bit. But it was nice to see them open up on the main stage and they were really angry and really pissed off. They looked like they were really there on fire. And the songs like New Jesus and The Way Into Lord of the Flies went down brilliantly. Um, Although I was really disappointed they didn't play Time Bomb. Um, but I thought they were really, really good. I was really into them. And it was a good way to open up a Sunday at a festival. People are really tired and hung over and had enough. And the, the crowd wasn't massive for it because people can be bothered. But the people who were there sort of got woken up nicely, let's say. Now, the next band I went to see is, uh, on the Avalanche stage was Black Futures. Now, Black Futures, I'd never even heard about them. Uh, I'd heard about them. I'd never heard any of their stuff before I went to watch, uh, to go watch them. But I've been recommended that I go see them live because they're a very, a very interesting band. Black Futures, it turns out, are a two-piece band uh, consisting of a drummer and a guitarist, keyboardist, guitarist. And um, they play this sort of industrial, anarcho, punk, um, full of like driving guitars and rhythmical drumming. Big melodies in it as well. I was absolutely blown away by it. <clears throat> as a two-piece band to put on a performance like that, they've got these six or seven performers up on stage with them, all dressed in these white hazmat suits. And they randomly just dance around. They come into the crowd, dance around, crowd surf through the crowd. The guitarist at one point in time came into the crowd and played guitar, running around the field, uh, running around the field, running around the tent. And uh, I thought it was brilliant, such a, such a visual treat to watch. I was really impressed with the tunes as well. They sounded incredible. And as a two-piece band, that's how you should put on a performance. Um, take note, like Slaves and Royal Blood and the other two-piece bands who are boring out there. Um, they got a really punk aesthetic to them. There's never a dull moment during their stage set. And uh, songs like the last song they played, a song called Tunnel Vision, I was really, really impressed with it. It sounded a bit like sort of Seek Seek Sputnik mixed with The Clash. But yeah, really impressed with them. Um, and then the band after that I went to go watch was a band I, I really, really enjoyed, a band called Heart of a Coward. Now, Heart of a Coward, a few years ago, they came out with, the, with an album called uh, Severance. I think it's called Severance. I can't remember why, I've just forgotten that. And um, uh, they seem to be on the cusp of sort of getting very, very big. They're this sort of metalcore, tech metalcore band. And um, their singer was really, really the focal point of the band. Everyone thought he was an incredible vocalist. And uh, he then left, and it seemed like that's it for Heart of a Coward. And they could have they could have just packed up and disappeared, but they haven't. They come back with a different singer and a new album this year called The Disconnect, which is really good. Now, the, uh, the lead singer, the new lead singer, he's um, uh, live. He's got bags of personality, and he could tell he was absolutely loving the whole thing. Huge grin on his face a lot of the time. The whole band looked like they were really enjoying themselves. Um, they, uh, he's got incredible vocal range, the new singer. He can hit the hit sort of clean vocals, I think, better than maybe the old singer could. Uh, maybe his ferocious growls aren't as ferocious as the uh, previous singer, but I thought live they were really good when you got songs like Collapse and uh, Drown in Ruin off the new album, and then classics like Hollow. I thought they sounded really, really good. Um, there is a slight over-reliance on the bass drop or a breakdown, but I think that's just the scene they come from. Uh, very impressed by them. Really, really enjoyed Heart of a Coward. The next band I went to go watch, Black Peaks, on the uh, Avalanche stage. Avalanche stage is really good on Sunday, by the way. Um, but Black Peaks are a band I've got a lot of history with. If anyone's watched any of my videos before from last year, especially like the top 20 albums, um, you'll see that Black Peaks are my number one album of last year. Black Peaks are actually a band I remember going to first see. Um, they were supporting a band called Lonely the Brave uh, in the rescue rooms in Nottingham. And I'd never even heard of them. And uh, it seems like a strange billing now, actually. That. <laughs> and uh, I remember watching them and just being blown away by Will's vocals and thinking, what the hell is this? This is incredible. And I followed them ever since then. That was before even the first album, Statues, came out. And it's great to see them pull a big crowd uh, mid-afternoon on a Sunday at a festival. This is how you do a performance. It seems like a real moment. The, the stage presence is outstanding of the guys. They don't do a lot in terms of running around and going crazy, but 
the the overall presence of them on stage, especially Will as a, as a vocalist. He's one of the best vocalists in rock. And with such an original and interesting and dynamic band behind him, it makes a hell of a spectacle, especially when you've got pyros in a tent. Pyros in a tent, what could go wrong? And uh, Will stands there a lot of times, his arms outstretched with the pyro going off. And it just looks fantastic. I thought it was a real, real victorious moment for the band. And it's great to see them pull a big crowd and pull off such a great set. When you've got bangers, like you open up with Can't Sleep and then close the set with a double header of um, Say You Will, followed by Glassbill Castles. That's great. And brilliant for Black Peaks. And I hope they continue to go up and up. And I think they will. I went back then to the mage stage to meet some friends after this and uh, ended up watching a Monomath. Now, I will say, I'm not a Monomath fan, so let's just say they weren't for me. Um, I'm not saying that... It's obvious they're very, very good at what they do, but Viking metal? That's not for me, I'm sorry. Way too cheesy. Their their guitar tone really reminiscent of, like, uh, Iron Maiden, I guess. Um, The stage show itself was great. I can't fault them for being a visually interesting band. Just watching them was interesting enough. They had people come on in Viking swords and shields and fighting each other on stage. They had a big dragon at the end where they did uh, Twilight of the Thunder Gods. And uh, yeah, it's a visual treat. It's fun to watch, but it's not for me. My mate said they were very good and he enjoyed it. So if you're a Monomath fan, I think you'd be pleased. I stayed around though because I wanted to watch Lamb of God. And Lamb of God's a band I've, I've loved for a long time and they never disappoint live. But to be honest, I think I've seen them better than this. I can't, they're not like they were bad. It felt like they were a little bit going through the motions. But for me, it could have just been me. I was getting pretty tired at this point in time. Sunday afternoon at a festival, I was hung over all the time, knackered, my feet were tired. And um, yeah, it might have just been me, that one. But Randy is still an absolute monster on vocals. The band sounded really, really tight. Um, they've got great songs like Redneck is Incredible Closes. It's still a big anthem of theirs. Um, the, the set list leaned heavily on Sacrament and Ashes of the Wake. Not necessarily a bad thing. I enjoyed hearing Hourglass. But I'd like to have heard maybe embers or still echoes off the recent album um but yeah it, it's still good always a good live band i um, just felt like they were just going through it at, the, at that time really uh, anyway <clears throat> the next band i really wanted to go watch was on the avalanche stage and there was a band called Whitechapel. um and now if it wasn't for me being incredibly drunk and emotional the day before watching the wonder years white chapel would have probably won my band of the weekend um but unfortunately uh, it's the second best band of the weekend for me the tent was absolutely rammed, and with an album like The Valley that's just come out, um, I think it's connected with a lot of people, and I can't say I'm surprised at how busy the tent was. It seems like there's a really, really big goodwill for Whitechapel at the moment, and a big sort of upswing in the popularity. And the, the Valley is my album of the year so far. What I will fucking say is, 20 minutes for a set is not long enough. That was really, really short. I couldn't believe how short it was. Come on, man. Second headliners were sub-headlining on the fourth stage. At least give them half hour or something. Could have done with another two or three songs at least. But anyway, um, the, the set list lent heavily on the new album. I think they know which side their bread's buttered at the moment, Whitechapel. And the new album um, is... The new songs just went down really, really well, let's say. Songs like Black Bear and uh, When a Demon Defiles a Witch. <sighs> huge, huge songs. Black Bear's got this incredible bounce to it. And When a Demon Defiles a Witch is this all first single off this album and it showcased the clean vocals that they've put in um, for the first time in their history really and the vocalist nails them on point live and that's so pleasing to see I enjoyed this set so so much but come on 20 minutes you're having a laugh there was a big chant at the back of uh, what the fuck when it finished because I think everyone was thinking the same thing no more Anyway, after that I walked out of the tent and Smashing Pumpkins had just started on the main stage so I missed about the first 10 minutes so I missed songs like um, I think they played Solara, Zero, uh, Knights of Malta and, and I joined just when they were playing Bullet with, Butterm- uh, Bullet with Butterfly Wing sorry. Um, what I will say is I think I missed the best part of the set because what I saw was an incredibly self-indulgent Billy Corgan set instead of a festival set that the Smashing Pumpkins should have done there was no 1979, no Today, no Tonight Tonight, <sighs> come on. Instead we got Tiberius, Glow, uh, Super Christ, uh, The Aeroplane Flies High, and uh, Cover of Snowblind. <clears throat> I'm not saying they're bad songs, but The Aeroplane Flies High is a dull closer for a set, mind you. And they did a cover of Snowblind um, with the lead singer of Mirka, Amelie Brun. Um, they're a great band, Mirka. 
uh, it's only her really she, she does this folk black metal if you never check them out she's brilliant the door I want to see her with Smashing Pumpkins doing a cover of Black Sabbath it's not high on my bucket list I'll be honest um, so yeah it just seemed like a very set list for them and not for us uh, so really disappointed in the end Corgan looked as disinterested as he always did Chamberlain's still an absolute beast of a drummer and it's lovely to see them all up there again James Eha and uh, Chamberlain and Corgan but wasn't great. The stage looked good. They had these big inflatable giant things behind, uh, like figures behind them that turned slowly. That looked nice. Um, but I remember when they walked off at the end, and I thought, oh, they've probably got to come back on. They haven't done the big songs yet. And um, instead of them coming back on, the roadies came on, and these figures sort of deflated slowly. And that's kind of how I felt about the set, really deflated. Um, anyway, so then the final band of the Sunday and the, the uh, festival closer, let's say, uh, is Tool. Now, I didn't go watch Slayer, by the way, because I was watching Tool instead. Um, Slayer's last UK performance. If you did go watch one, I saw you had a while of a time. But for me, Tool was a big draw for the Sunday. Um, what I will say about Tool is they feel like a generational band to me. If you're a casual rock fan of, say, the age between 18 and 25, I, you probably won't even know who Tool are. I remember talking to someone last year and having a guess at the festival headliners for this year's download. Uh, I got two out of three right, by the way, just saying. Um, and I said it would be Slipknot, Metallica and Tool. And they said, who are Tool? And I thought, Jesus, they, uh, no, one, they, no one knows who Tool are nowadays. They're not on streaming sites, you can't download them. So I guess if that's your way of always getting music, you won't know who Tool are. Uh, well, you might have heard the name, but you won't have heard much of their music. So I think they are a generational band. So I think the, the crowd probably was a bit sparser than I thought. Maybe they were more people who were expecting. If you were a casual fan, I think a lot of people walked away. Um, but for me, I thought they were excellent. Visually, they're stunning. They didn't have any of the big screens on. Uh, well, they did have them on, but not for filming them. They had a, the, the videos of the songs and visual accompaniments for the songs on. Um, the band sounded amazing. The light show was amazing. The atmosphere was brilliant. Maynard James Keenan's an incredible vocalist. And when you've got songs like Anima, uh, Schism, Sting Fist, The Part 46 and 2, Parabola... Um, yeah, I wasn't disappointed with that at all. I thought it was really, really good. And the new songs, um, Descending and Invincible, went down really well. I thought Invincible was excellent. Um, so, yeah, really look forward to their new album. But, yeah, maybe Tall aren't the casual download headliners that people wanted. But for me, they were excellent. Um, so that's it, really. I'm going to come back with, a, with another video, hopefully tomorrow or the day after, just talking about the festival, the future of the festival, what was good, what was bad about the festival. Uh, nothing to do with the music then. Um, so thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of the uh, Sunday bands. And I'll see you soon.